my 43 years experience, I think I can tell you some of the practices that work for me along the line. Now, the first key to civics education is not a civics course loaded down with facts and memorization, but it's a background of all the social studies disciplines, history, economics, law. Those courses have to be taught first, world history, to give kids the background to discuss good civics education. So, you, so we need to look at our standards first and make sure the background is there before we can actually talk about a good civics course. Secondly, what we need, and this is controversial to some, but when I was teaching government, we always had current event Fridays. Current event Fridays, and the reason we talk about current events is to be someone involved in civics, you've got to be involved with what's happening across the country and across the world. One of the things that I did was allow students to pick the issues that we would talk about in the beginning of the year because you made the class student-driven, not teacher-driven, and my job was to facilitate. So students got to participate in events that they were interested in, that they could research, and we could debate those issues in class. Because you have to bring issues in front of students. Once we picked those issues, the kids knew what they were, they could take it home and ask their parents if those were okay, and we discussed them. If there was something they didn't want to talk about, we maybe allowed them to leave the room for that issue. But kids need to hear what the issues are. That's good practice. And in a good civics course, they need to put in practice what they're learning. You tie the curriculum to something close that is happening in their community so they can see an outcome. That's why we don't want a course, a course that one course fits all, because all our communities are so different. And we want to tie our civics education into some of the issues going on in our communities. That's important. That's best practices. 